Hello, beautiful creatives. Welcome back to Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. I'm Linda Marcel, and welcome to my channel if you're new. And if you are an old time viewer, part of the family, and you've been around for a while, I just wanna thank you so much for all your amazing comments on my last video. Uh, if you didn't see that video, I'll, I'll put a link up here so that you can watch it. You know, it really struck me how much you guys First of all, how supportive your comments were. And another thing was, was how deeply you guys share with me sometimes in your messages and in the comments. And it, it really got me thinking this week. You guys shared with me how, you know, I, I got all dolled up for that video. I did my hair, I put on makeup and I got dressed up, drank a bunch of caffeine and, you know, wanted to really present this vibrant, energetic video for you guys for New Year's. And I really enjoyed making it. It lifted my spirits. Your response to it was incredible. But I did get a lot of messages from people who are also struggle with chronic fatigue like I do, other chronic illnesses, chronic pain or grief. And they were saying, you know, but I have this thing and I just can't get to the table to create. I can't get my paints out. I'm really struggling. And I thought, I wonder if sometimes, you know, you, you kind of fall into this thing with YouTube where um, it takes a lot of time to put these videos together. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. The editing process can be grueling. There's equipment that you need to invest in. So there is a point where you need to make money on your videos. And when you fall into that pattern, it's such a slow process and you make such a tiny amount of money for each like and subscribe that you get and each person that watches through the whole video that you f you can easily fall into the trap of, I want to make uh, the brightest, shiniest video um, so that I'll get, you know, it'll YouTube will push my video forward in the analytics because it's getting a lot of likes and blah, blah, blah. I'll get a bigger check and it'll help support my family. Um, and it's a dangerous place to fall into because as much as I enjoyed making that video for you and as much as you guys said that you enjoyed that video, I felt kind of bad for the people who commented that they are struggling, really struggling with creativity because, you know, that's what this channel is about. It's kind of about how to create during times of illness and grief and difficult, you know, life challenging situations. Yeah, but the point that I'm trying to get to is I decided that this week and possibly even for the whole month of January, I would show up as I am. So if I'm feeling awful, I'm going to show up with my hair all flat and yucky looking because I've had it in a ponytail for three days in a row. Um, you know, no makeup, looking a little ghostly and pale and tired, really tired. So what I am going to do is try to be really genuine this, um, may maybe this whole month. You know, I told you in my last video how I have trouble staying in one lane on the my, my life's highway and I like to take the exits here and there. So I have that as a disclaimer. But the way that I'm feeling today is I would like to share something a little more genuine of when I'm not feeling well, this is what I do to create because I'm always telling you guys how important it is, how important it is to create your way through challenges. But lately in my videos, I don't think I've really been demoing that for you, at least not what that looks like in my life when I'm really struggling with super low energy and pain and, and not feeling good. And okay, so how do you do it? How do you sit down and create when your energy's that Let's low? Let's just be honest. I'm being really vulnerable with you right now. And I'm, I, you know, have no clue what I'm going to show you. This video may come out total crap, but I really want to share with you. Okay, this is what it looks like on a day when I have no energy. How am I going to do it? How am I going to move myself into the creative process? And I don't want to plan it out because I want it to be really spontaneous. If it fails miserably, you know, I want you to see that. But but here's the thing. It can't fail miserably because it's the creative process. There's no way for it to fail because I have no expectations. I'm just showing up and I have my YouTube family here. You guys have become so special to me. And the comments that you left in the last video just connected my heart even further to you. So here it is. I'll just start 
I'll just start with what I have here or what's in my drawers and we'll see what happens. And my hope is that this comes out in a way that you guys are able to say, oh, wow, I could do that. Okay, so let me flip the camera around and show you what my desk looks like right now. I haven't gotten anything out special. It's just the way I left it when I was up in my studio last. Okay, okay so these are the different things that are out on my desk right now. I have some ink tents over there, some Mgram and Sennelier, or Schminka watercolors here. I have some, these were actually in a recent art haul, these Turner Acryl Gouache colors, and I have not used these yet. If you watched my New Year's uh, end of the year um, art haul, these were the brushes that I just got. I got out my Moxa. No, this isn't weed. <laughs> it's Moxa. If you've ever had acupuncture, this is the stuff that they burn on the needles when you're getting acupuncture. And I find it very calming and uplifting. So I have this little olive oil dish we bought from a local potter. So I'm going to burn some Moxa. I'm going to light myself a candle. This is one little item that came the afternoon after I made my 2022 final unboxing video for you guys. So I will unbox that. I have some of my sketchbooks here and some etcher sketchbooks there. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention is my little transom palette. You guys probably remember the video where I loaded this this spring for my plein air palette. And most of the paints are pretty much used up. But there's still some paint in there that I would like to sort of get used up so that when I, I leave it for the rest of the winter, it doesn't get yucky and dried out and um, I can re reload it for the spring. So that's a possibility that I might get some of those out. All kinds of, all kinds of possibilities. If you've never burned moxa before, it's just so calming, very healing. My acupuncturist actually grows this herself. I just love the smell of this. Sometimes I'll just walk around the room with it. Like when you burn sage, just walk around the room and it's, it's sort of a blessing. Mm, can you smell it? It's wonderful. I just love the smell of that. Let that burn. It's a beeswax candle. So it has a delicious smell. It smells like honey. Okay. So there's two things right there that will help me sort of center myself spiritually, energetically, and, you know, calm my nervous system to prepare for a creative practice. And I usually say a little prayer before I go that if, you know, God or spirit whatever you're comfortable with, higher self wants to guide me in this session, that I am totally open to being guided. Okay, so this is the miniest unboxing ever. Actually, I think I did one even more mini unboxing than this at one point because it was a single colored pencil from Jackson's that had been on back order. I think it was Jackson's. It might have been Bleck. I'll put a link to these below in the video description. So what these are is they're supposed to be toiletry trays, um, you know, for like your toothbrush water cup, toothbrush holder, or your dish soap, and they come in different sizes. This is the smallest size. Like I said, I'll link it below. I believe I have added this to my link that shows up under all my videos where um, it goes to my Amazon favorite art supplies page. So that is the unboxing. 
So this is a moleskin journal that I have barely broken in with a little sketch I did there. I'm just covering up my address with the watercolor. This is, um, which is this? The art collection. And it is a acid 111 pound acid free paper, eight and a quarter by 11 and a quarter expandable with an expandable inner pocket. And this has been kicking around for a while. I just haven't really, I didn't really decide what purpose this was going to have. So I'm deciding today that this will be probably a mix of things, but I definitely want it to be some expressive art stuff. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with a piece of charcoal. Want a big fat one? Just to break the surface. So this, actually right off the bat, I was trying to think of what I felt like putting on here next, and I was thinking some gesso, which I really love to do that combination with charcoal or gesso or like stabilo or water-soluble graphite with gesso, but this actually is really speaking to me as it is. So I think I'm going to leave it this way for now. It doesn't mean that I might decide at a later time to go into it, but I actually really love this. So I'm going to flip the page and start again. And you know, if it ends up feeling really right, I may just do a few of these and just leave them and see how they speak to me at another time. This is really liberating. Uh, I'm just feeling more relaxed by the minute as I do this. And I may at some point stop talking. If I do, I'll just play music over it, but for right now, this is just feeling so right. And it just feels so good. So I love these giant pieces of charcoal. I am so snuffly today. I'm going to have to edit all my snuffles out of this video, but these are two other art supplies that I used to use. Well, I used to use these a lot and I don't use them anymore. And I almost never use these. Rembrandt soft pastels. Part of the reason it's not that I don't love soft pastels. I just am kind of a fussy person with messy things. And because I do have breathing issues, I don't like dust in the studio. But as I was staying here and drawing with the charcoal and trying to stay in sort of an intuitive place. I absolutely was not thinking, oh, what should I pick up next? What I should pick up, what should I pick up next? These two things immediately came to mind. So because of that, I feel like especially these two are calling to me. So we'll see. Just don't give yourself time to think about the marks that you're making. Just put them down. You know, it's going to take way too much energy if you start trying to analyze every mark you make. You really just need to jump in. And move your body, move your arm, move things around as you're making marks on the paper. It's a little counterintuitive to be doing this on video and talking about it as I go, but I still have enough experience working this way that I can kind of stay in the flow. I don't know how much water this will, this paper will tolerate, so we'll see. Again, this, just grabbing not even looking around my desk so much. I have so many things out on my desk. I have plenty of things to, to grab. So 
So I'm not thinking about it. I'm just grabbing whatever speaks to me. I have my camera really close to the... Really close here. I might not be able to do too much. Oh, hubby's sneaking into the studio. I just want to let some stuff run. And then I can just sort of push things around with this. If I want to dip this in water to get more flow. Get some different marks. Okay, so speaking of interruptions, when you're getting into the flow with an intuitive piece, look who just showed up. Who's tiptoeing into my studio? Hi, everybody. What you doing? Toshi's over there in the bed. Oh, well, take it off the garbage. It's more worthy of really trying to get this guy painting again. Is this the Hemi gouache? Oh, uh, the Hemi gouache. Such a distinctive style. I would have recognized that right away. Yeah. I love this little house over here. You picked up That's so that adorable. Yep, yeah. Oh, and your head. little, your little yep. red. Here, I don't know if the light is on this well enough. It looks dark through my finder. It's really dark out. My so. sky was a total wreck, and I tried to save it. It's still kind of weird. but Your sky? Right, yeah. Just remember, your sky is your lightest I, value in I your painting. I made a mess of it, and I had to go over it. Well, once it's dry, just go over it with white gouache oh, all right. to lighten it a little bit, because that will, make, that will pop your foreground out even more. Oh, thanks. But I am so happy to see you <laughs> paint. Does it feel good? Yeah, I to like be it painting too. again. I think it was cute. I think it's very cute, and I think you're adorable. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to try the white from the Rembrandt. See what happens. This is moleskin paper, so it has no tooth, but it'll be interesting to see if it sticks. Boy, it does. It sticks to that wet paper. Oh, I like what happened there. That is cool, cool texture. Wow. That's pretty neat. That's very neat. Okay, and I just really got a strong feeling for some purple verticals. Which, you know, my brain automatically translates into trees. I wish this was a little bit of a darker purple. I love how the paper is sort of coming apart in areas. Not trying to be neat or precious at all. Just really Breathing deep and just really releasing, releasing energy that's stuck in my body, expectations. Um, Judgment. You gotta release judgment. You know, that's a big one. Self-judgment. Oh, it's not good enough. That's what my husband is struggling with, being sort of a new artist and you know playing around. He he wants lessons, he wants advice, but on the other hand, his art confidence is so fragile. 
I, I want to just be careful when he asks for advice because I had to sneeze um, because I don't want to I don't want him to get discouraged or feel that he has to create in a certain way. Okay, so I'm gonna. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I was gonna say I'm gonna leave that there, but my finger says no. We're not gonna leave it there. Got to get over messy finger syndrome when you're using this sort of stuff. Okay, what do I feel? I feel, I feel something, but um, hmm. Do I want to just keep going with these? No, I actually see. This is when you start. You got to be careful when you start to question, because part of me. Immediately what my thought was, was I want to grab some paint. Um, I just want a color that feels right to me. I, okay, I'm going to grab pink. It just doesn't seem... I don't normally get paint on my hands because of my autoimmune stuff, but this time I really feel like I need to uh, squish some paint around with my fingers. You know, I gotta go with what I feel. Usually I am pretty good about putting gloves on, but just right now I'm not set up for it and I don't want to break my, break my trance. And right away I know I want some of this yellow in here. This is a uh, Naples yellow. And I may not even get into saying too much about what I'm doing, what colors I'm choosing, because I don't want to activate that part of my brain. I think I'm going to take this, some of the M. Graham, maybe, that I have in here. Let's see what's in here. And some kind of ratty brush. I'm going to use fan brushes. So, what would... I know, I got a kind of a feeling for what color I'm looking for. I'm gonna need to get some white gouache out. Actually, I haven't used this in a long time, so I'm gonna use this over here. I need to think to use this more. And I want a little Naples yellow maybe? Possibly yellow ochre, but let's see what the Naples yellow does. Kinda know what I'm wanting. It's just a feeling. I think I'll feel it when I get there. I feel like that might be it. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but. See, part of my brain is trying to kick in and say, oh, don't ruin that background you have, but it's a stronger feeling to lay some of this paint down. So I'm going with the stronger feeling. so many snuffles to edit out of here. Drive me crazy how runny my nose is today. See, right off the bat, I can tell that that does not feel um, chromatic enough for me. I need a brighter yellow. So, I just looked up and saw my ink tents. 
going to try and see what I have here. Now the first color that I grabbed was this, so let's see what this looks like. This paper is taking a surprising amount of abuse. Okay, now I may take a little tiny bit of white to sort of seal that. Mixing with the blue and turning to a green. Like really bright pops of sun back there or something. Just really feel that warmth of the sun. this white. I don't want to lose that white. Pastel. Soft pastel floating around back there. I feel like I'm at a point where I have to be really careful that I don't start trying to turn this into something that, I mean, if it turns into something, if that's what I truly feel, that's fine, but I don't want to feel like I have to turn it into something. I don't know. Just like these pops of white in here. Okay, I'm feeling like I want to get some of this blue back in here, but with some white on top of it. Okay, so I can tell that I have reached a point where at least for now I need to stop because I'm getting really tired. And at least for me, that is a sign that um, I'm moving up into my right brain and I'm starting to try to think and it's, it's fatiguing me. So that's where I need to stop for right now. But that's basically it. You know, I started with this and just something about this felt really authentic and of value to me. And I kind of hesitated because I was going to go over it and I thought, no, I really need to save this. I just know I need to save this. So I turned the page, started over and just stayed with the process. And this is what happened. 
and I hope watching the process is helpful to you. You know, if you if you like watching me do it this way, where I'm not at all planning a painting and I'm just sort of going intuitively with what I feel drawn to grab out of my drawers, let me know and I, I would be happy to do more of this. It actually would be probably really good for me to get back to doing some of this because I've kind of moved away from it and it was a really great exercise. Let me pop the camera off and show you what my desk looks like now. Okay, so this is what my desk looks like after. I love this palette, by the way, these little stackable palettes that I just unboxed. This is the other one, really like them a lot. It was very freeing and loose not to have to worry about little sections and whatever. And then when I needed another clean section, I just took a wet paper towel and wiped a spot off. But this is all the stuff that I was e able to easily grab. I ended up going into my drawers and grabbing a couple of things that I haven't used in forever and did use some of this um, gouache, but I only used things that I felt drawn to use. I didn't have to think at all. You know, a thought would come into my mind to use something and I would grab it. So, and I did actually try a couple of these new colors that I got, but that is the painting. Let me grab, Dawn built this little stand for me a couple of years ago little angled stand and it's really nice for holding up a sketchbook. As a matter of fact, I probably should have put my sketchbook on there when I was painting. But that's my intuitive session for today. Felt really good. I was really able to keep my head out of it. And each time that my head did start to go into it and think I need to do this or maybe I should do that, I was able to pop right out of it. And then towards the end, my body just completely signaled that it was the end because I started to get really tired. And like I said, that's always a sign for me that I, uh, I'm getting into my right brain and my fatigue is showing up, so it's time to stop. It, this felt good, both of these. Both of these felt really good to do. So this will be my 2023 Intuitive Art Journal for sure. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more paintings like this. You know, there's no reason why on this channel I can't do a mix of, you know, my more serious paintings because I do have to sell paintings through my website to make a living to help supply my YouTube habit. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I do need to do that kind of work too. But I do also need to be encouraged at times to do more of my intuitive work. And if that's something you'd like me to video while I do it, I'm happy to do that. As long as I can do it in a way where I still stay in my intuitive mind. And I was able to do that today. Okay, so a mini unboxing and got to use my new palettes, got to use some art supplies I haven't used in a while and accomplished my first drawing and painting of 2023. Thanks for sharing my first creative uh, painting and drawing experience of 2023 with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it for you. And I hope that you are creating already in 2023, this first day of 2023. And I hope it just goes, this just shows you how easy it can be to just make marks on paper. With, and it doesn't always come out. I mean, this is a, this to me, to some people, this would be a mess, but to me, it's aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't always work that way. It doesn't matter if it comes out mud. As a matter of fact, Don is downstairs. He did one painting and then he did another painting that he wasn't happy with and he was frustrated. And he said, oh, I wiped it all off. It came out terrible. And I said, if you're saying that your painting is coming out terrible, then you're, you are missing the point of the experience. I told him you are just getting out your paints and setting, you know, putting paint on paper to have a creative experience to just get in touch with your flow again. He hasn't painted in a long time. So he sort of got the point that he 
the first painting came out very easy for him and was very enjoyable. When he went to do the second painting, he had higher expectations and he was wanting to create a pretty painting. And that's where he sort of got off track. Instead of just expressing, experimenting and having a what if attitude, like saying, what if I put this here? What if I used this color? What if I used that color? And sort of moving through the process intuitively, um, he kind of blocked himself and got frustrated by saying, I did it wrong. The result is no good. I need to wipe this out. And I asked him, please, next time, don't wipe it out. Just keep it, put it aside, keep it and look at it later. You know, give it 24 hours and look at it tomorrow and see how you feel about it then. Okay, I hope that helps. Oop, look who's back in the studio. Oh, we got both the boys, uh, Toshi, Nico. Hi, buddy. What I did. Here, bring them up here on the, this, on the lights. This one I should have should have shown you before I went over. I got the scourge. I had this all green, whatever, for my grass area and like a brown on the lower part. And I started to make some trees and it was absolutely horrible. Okay. But why, why is it horrible? Because it just looked horrible. So I just washed over the whole thing. And then I saw what looks like a Quonset hut. So I'm going to start something. Okay. But wait, leave it there. Did was the okay? You had a very enjoyable experience when you did your first painting, right? Oh yeah, right. You that that went really smoothly, right? And you enjoyed it, right? This this one, I just put a sky and some green in the bottom and walked away. And then came back and worked on what I saw instead of trying to create something. So this was very intuitive. Very intuitive. And then you went in and thought you and decided you were going to do a good painting, right? Yeah. See. And I wrecked it. I like this, actually. It, I like it, this a lot. Oh. You don't see any value in it yet? Yeah, I do. I think before you add anything else to this, I would leave this as an abstract. I like these dark verticals, and I like this curve, this gold. It almost looks like gold metallic, but it's not. But I like that gold yeah, I paint. Guess it could have a look. Yeah, I like it. I like these. Like I, my mind wants to say, is that a fence? Are those oh, trees? Is this a forest? Is this fog? Oh, is it smoke? Fish. Yeah, I like it. And I think the reason you're seeing that you think there's something wrong with it is because you are you were trying to paint a painting. Oh wow, well. you're right. Do you like it now? No, I like it. Isn't mm. that something? I'll be darned. Okay, so and maybe and this one? maybe your values are a little close together in this. You know, yeah. but still, you do have some darker darks. Yeah. You're the only thing maybe you're missing are a little bit of lighter lights, but still, you have a range, a little bit of range in there. All right, so that one you liked. Yeah, this one I worked on. You said the black. Wasn't oh good. yes, yeah. So I went right over the black, crawled that up like some rocks and whatever and all. And yeah. It, totally changed. It. Yes, that was a nice that change. Was just a flat black. Terrible. Now to me, this looks like a little terrible pond. Did you? You didn't try to lighten the sky yet. Nope. Yeah, I would lighten the sky, and then you watch how this will pop. Yeah. But I think yeah, toning big, down that black. Big change there. Yeah, the purple pop is see complementary colors too, yep. so that really works well together. Cool. Listen, before you run away. So, are you happy to be painting again? You are? Yeah. It feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. All right. Okay, guys, if you're still watching at this point in the video, type shine your light in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you guys, and I hope you're having a great first week of 2023.